Hello everybody, welcome back. Carl again. Today I have something a little different today. Uh, this is going to be a teardown of the Deltran Battery Tender Junior. Now I got this for my motorcycle and I was pretty interested in about how it works. It comes with some instructions here. Uh, there's a really generous five-year warranty I believe on these. Super nice. We'll set that to the side. It comes with these adapters. Now, as you know, this is the actual unit here. It has these patented and trademarked little thumb grips because there was a lot of uh, Chinese manufacturers copying them. So Dale Tran went ahead and uh, patented these little grippies to remove it. it takes a standard uh, 110 outlet and it has this SAE two pin connector on it. And then it's labeled negative is inside and positive is outside. Now, to attach it to your device, motorcycle, boat, RV, whatever it is, you have these clips. So you have uh, ring terminals here with a fuse, which it comes with of 7.5 amps. And then that other end connects to SAE here with a nice convenient cover. So you can permanently install this uh, on your vehicle. And then also is a set of battery clips, which is really nice, again with the fuse and an SAE connector. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Deltran talks about that this is a 12 volt, 750 milliamp battery tender. It's not a charger, it's not a uh, maintainer, it is actually a tender. And according to their information, the way it works is once it gets below their float voltage, it actually turns on and starts to charge the battery or trickle charge the battery back up. And then it repeats that cycle. And so Deltran battery tender says just leave it plugged in all the time. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Now, for those following my videos, you've known I've done a couple of uh, charge controllers. And uh, I have the one specifically from Julian uh, Eilet, who talks about uh, using the Arduino. And uh, there's a video about that as well I did. So I thought, how neat would it be if I could take a wallboard or uh, AC-DC adapter, plug it in instead of a solar panel. So essentially use this instead of solar, and then use the same charge controller. So I was going to toy with that, but for the price, I paid $24 for this. So for the price, you know, with these connectors, they're nice and watertight now. Uh, and you almost can't beat it. I don't know that I can make something for that cheap. But I was very intrigued at how it works. So I'm going to just take it apart here and see. Oh, so, okay, so I got the three screws out. It comes right apart. No worries. Okay, so no surprise here. Obviously, AC-DC transformer. I almost could expect that. And I can. I don't even have to look at this board, and I know what's going to be there. There's going to be an IC microcontroller, because that's what they talk about in the directions. You're going to have a bicolor LED. I'm sure that is a voltage regulator for the IC, and then a heat sink. So I'm almost certain this is going to be very simple, straightforward construction. Okay, so... Pretty simple construction. You have um, some diodes here for obviously bridge rectification purposes. You can see the power leads come in here through the bridge rectifier right here. Uh, you have a, believe it or not, this is an Atmel AT Tiny 13 uh, processor. Now you'll see there's an unpopulated. It looks like to me that they actually have an SOIC or a uh, PDIP uh, 8. So you can actually use either one of those chips. A bicolor LED, you have two resistors for that LED, a transistor, which is probably switching uh, this LED on and off. And then uh, in the back here, this is actually not a voltage regulator, but a BD438. So they, you could, they could be using this transistor here to switch this MOSFET on and off. And you see it's got a pretty beefy heat sink there. Uh, there is an, uh, looks like two diodes here in a resistor, so they could be uh, just using that as a voltage regulator for that IC chip. I'm not sure what the voltage is on the AT Tiny 13. And then, of course, a capacitor, um, a small diode here, and that's pretty much it. Very interesting. So, unfortunately, although the circuit would be easy to reverse engineer, the code is going to be the hard part, and I'm sure they're going to have that code locked down. But basically, this is what I wanted to build. My thought was to use a solar charge controller 
and instead of using solar panel I would basically just use this AC to DC converter so now that I have this and I see how they do it maybe I'll work on that and then of course I could always change the code in the microcontroller to turn off at let's say 14.1 volt and then to turn back on at 12.9 and that would essentially would give me that on off cycle and therefore it wouldn't constantly charge the battery and it would also allow it to discharge and come back up Anyways, hopefully this was helpful. Just a quick video about inside of these things. Pretty interesting technology. And thanks again for watching.